Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today we will continue our topic on corporate taxation. Yeah. So we are going to refer in the last class. All right, I've given you uh, some examples based on previous year final exam. Yeah. But today we are going through uh, a tutorial question as we have shared in the Google Classroom. Right, there are three questions. One is the factors in the Second one is green lives in the And third one is the purified, purified in the yeah? So we were going through the first question, factors in the All right, so uh, I believe that this topic is actually a kind of a revision because you have actually have done your uh, business income, business expenses when you did your taxation one. But what is more here is that we are going to apply the same rules, same uh, principles for a company, right? As you, as you can see that in your taxation one, right, your business income, business expenses is for an individual having a business income and most likely they are under enterprise. But here we are under company, so the kind of income and the kind of expenses are a lot more, right? So we expect that there are a lot of adjustment that you have to do Right, so hopefully you won't uh, be lost, right? Because this is just a revision, right? Revision and also an additional. Hold on, yeah. I need to pick up my whiteboard. Okay. Okay, in the last class, right? We have actually gone through on your income. Okay. In the last class, we went through on your income. We have your income, and this income could either be a business income, right? Section 4A. It could be a non business income. Right, I mean that section 4C or section 4D. What else do you have? You may have your non taxable income. Right, example of your non taxable income are your gain on disposal of your fixed asset, gain on your disposal of your long term investment, you know, like for example, your shares. So these are non taxable income. So when you talk about income in arriving to profit before tax, those income has been added. Yeah. So it has been added in arriving to your profit before tax. So when you do your adjustment in arriving to your adjusted income from your business, I remember that business, you can have more than one business income. So you can have business one and business two. But remember that for income tax purpose, business one and business two has to be assessed separately. Right, you have to get to the business income. For A means that for business one, what is your statutory income? Right, and for your business two, what is your statutory income? So you have to separate the income and remember that everything is in your profit before taxation. So that's why you have to do adjustment in order to compute your adjusted income from business one or even from your business two. Okay, so if in your income part, Right, or you're in the profit before tax, you have your business income. So, for example, business income from your sales, all right, means that you don't have to do any adjustment. So, you leave that amount in the profit before tax. So, you don't have to do any adjustment. But if the income is a non business income, for example, you have your rental income, you have your dividend income, you have your interest income. So, all this income is a non business. Sometimes we call it as an investment income. Yeah, so it's under section 4C and 4D means that you have to take it out first, all right, then only you assess. It's still taxable because it's a section 4C and 4D, it's still taxable, it's just that you have to take it out from your business income. Yeah, so all here, all right, is uh, your, you have everything is here. So you want to only first assess your 4A business one, and then you want to assess your 4A business two, and then you want to assess how much is your non-business income, right? Then only you come to your aggregate income. 
So the formula, the format for your chargeable income must be very clear. All right, I remember that I have shown you the example of, oh no, not the example, the format for your chargeable income. All right, I want you to look into that and then see, uh, you must be very clear. Right? You must be very clear with the format because without that, uh, if you're not clear about the format, all right, you will have difficulty all right, to come up with your chargeable income of the company. Yeah? All right. So it means that now you have to decide, okay, where is the business income, whether you want to leave it. All right. Issue is either you want to no adjustment. So we call it as a nil. When there's no adjustment, you don't have to do anything. You put it as a nil. All right. So every item in the notes to the accounts must appear in your answer, in your answer sheet. Yeah. If there is no adjustment, you don't have to do anything, you just put a nil. But if you have to do adjustment, either you have to add back or you have to minus. Yeah. So how you decide, all right? For example, if the income has been added, all right, it could be that if your business income, nil. But if it's a non-business income, you are going to, to take it out. Why you minus? Because why? That income, the non-business income has been added in arriving to your PPT. So in order for you to take it out, all right, you minus it. So plus minus, so they can zero rise. So it will not appear in your adjusted income. So that's how you do it. Similarly, for non-taxable income, you, you don't want to pay tax on your non-taxable income, all right? So it shouldn't be tax. So what you do is that you want to take it out, that income, so that you don't have to pay tax on that income. So how what you do? Again, that non-taxable income has been added in arriving to your PBT. That's why now you have to minus. Take it out means that you have to pay minus. All right. So we have covered that in the previous class on your income. So today, all right, what we are going to do is that we are going to look into expenses, right? In your question, normally the expenses is longer, very long, yeah? So we have a lot of expenses, then you must know for every type of expense, what is the tax treatment, all right? Whether the expenses, remember that you, when you talk about expenses, all right, in arriving to profit before tax, what have you done to the expense? You have minus, all right? You have deducted your expenses in arriving to your profit before, profit before tax, okay? So what you do is that you must understand that the expenses that have been deducted in your profit and loss account, the expense can either be deductible expense. What do you mean by deductible expense? It means that it could be allowed under section 33 or section 34. 33, what does it say about section 33? Expense is allowed when it's on incurred wholly exclusively right, in the production of income. So it means that the expenses, you're talking about income, uh, expense, you're talking about business income, expenses must be related to the business income. If the expense related to your, uh, if your income is a rental income, expense must be related to your rental income. That's what it meant by section 33. Section 34 is a special section, namanya special provision, right? Because in section 34, they can list down all the expenses which is allowable under the Act, right? So if it's allowable, then it means that you can't, you can't say much, right? It's a special provision, means that it's a special deduction. Even though it does not meet section 33, for example, especially, for example, expenses is a capital in nature. Revenue, Section 33 says it must be revenue in nature, but Section 34 says that capital expenditure of this kind is allowable, then we have to allow, because why? The law says so, right? Because Section 34, the law says so, means that the law says this expense is deductible, then you have to give that deduction, right? And then the other types of expense that you have uh, take into account in arriving to PBT is what we call non deductible expense. Sometimes we call it as a non-allowable expense. Yeah? With a non-allowable expense, it means that the law, the income tax act does not allow those expense to be deducted in arriving to your adjusted income. Alright? But in arriving to PBT, you have actually deducted the non-allowable expense. 
So when you have deducted non-allowable expense, that means that the, you are not following the law. So how can you adjust? You have to adjust in such case that if there is a non-allowable expense deducted in arriving to your PVT, then deducted again, deducted already. So what you have to do, you have to add that. Why? Because the law does not allow you to deduct the expense, but you have deducted. So what you do, you add back. So katalah you have deducted 100, now you add back 100. So it's zero rise off. Right, so it means that you don't have any uh, expense of that nature in your adjusted income. Right, example of non-deductible expense, for example, you're talking about renovation expenses, you're talking about expenses related to your capital, which is capital in nature, all right, a non outgoing, for example, your depreciation expense, you don't have to pay for it, and then any provision accounts, right, it's not allowed. So, all this has to be adjusted. How you adjust, you have to put, you have to add back those expenses, yeah. But what about the deductible expenses now? Deductible it means that expense has been deducted and the law allows the expense to be deducted. So, you don't have to do anything like, because it's okay to deduct the expense, yeah? So in this case, you have to put a, a name. For every item related to the expense, you know adjustment, then you put a, put a name. What else? And then you also have another expenses that we call as a double deduction. Double deduction then means that the law allows you to deduct the same expenses twice in arriving to your adjusted income, yeah? So, assuming that, for example, expenses which is given as a double deduction, uh, remuneration paid to a disabled person, a disabled employee, so the company can claim double deduction. Yeah? So, when you claim double deduction, it means that company has already deducted the remuneration here. Right? It's already in the expense because under remuneration, ke, under payroll, ke, under salary, ke, the expense for the disabled person has been deducted. But the law said, oh, because you have disabled person, you have paid remuneration, you can deduct one more time. So when you can deduct more time, one time here, so you deduct one more time adjustment. All right, so you get one deduction, another deduction. So the expense, you get double deduction. Similarly, now, for example, of those company expenses incurred for practical training, yeah, if they absorb any practical training, students, the payment of the practical training, for example, 1,000 ringgit per month, the company incur 1,000, but they can actually claim 2,000. Why? Because it's double deduction, right? They claim one time in arriving to PBT and claim one more time in arriving to adjusted income. Okay. So now what we are going to do is that we are going to identify, we are going to look into the question, all right, and try to identify every item, every expenses in the questions, in the profit and loss account. We are going to identify what kind of expenses. Whether the expenses is deductible, and the, then if it's deductible, you have to know. Why is it deductible? Because it's under section 33. It's under section 34. Or why is it not deductible? And the, so non-deductible normally is under section 39. Yeah? Non-deductible expense pun dah ada list dah. What are expenses which are non-deductible. So you cannot argue anymore. If you Whenever you find that expense, uh, expenses, you know, oh, this one section 39, so you have to add that. And double deduction normally is gazetted. Alright, so, and remember that the tax law changes every year. So you must be aware of the changes of the tax law. So be aware that maybe last year you can get double deduction, but this year you cannot get any more double deduction. Or previously, it was given as a single deduction, but maybe 2019, the government announced that that kind of expense is given as a double deduction, all right? Why government give double deduction? To encourage company, all right, to engage into certain activities. For example, we're talking about uh, employment of disabled person, all right? If you employ disabled person, the government say that, okay, I can give you double deduction. It means that it helps the company to reduce their tax liability by employing disabled person. Okay, so now let's look into the example. But in, in other words, we are going to do what we are going to do, right? As I said earlier, so starting from the profit before tax, all right? Okay, the law says that, all right, in arriving to adjusted income is your gross income minus allowable 
expense. Then you come to your adjusted income. Okay? So that's the law. But in practice, all right, when you do tax form for companies, even when you're working in a, uh, in a firm, for example, yeah, um, the practice is that rather than having gross income minus allowable expenses, what we do is that given the profit and loss account, we already have your profit before tax. All right? So when we start from profit before tax, we are going to work backwards. So, but well, at the end of the day, your adjusted income here will be the same as your working in PBT. All right. So in practice, this is how you do it. And even in the examination, whether exam in IRUM or even your professional exam, whether it's ACTA or even CPA or MIPA, all right, you are going to apply this format. All right. So what you do is that for BT, then talking about income, right? So then you have to do adjustment for non-business income. All right. You have to take it out and then you non-taxable income okay when it comes to expenses you have to then you uh, then uh, what else if it's a business income it's a meal all right but talking about expenses you have to add back your non-allowable expense you're going to minus your double deduction by talking about allowable expense it's called as you put as a meal for your allowable expense all right, remember that the term is nil. You must put the nil even though there's no adjustment. The, every item ada satu tick. Yeah, so nil ni maybe ada berapa puluh tick kat sini. So make sure that you have your answer. All right, if there is no adjustment, you have to put that item as nil. Some students, they kata, okay, I just do adjustment je. Tak payah letak nil. All right, betul. You will get the same adjusted income. But you will lose uh, marks for the nil, alright? Because the item is say that at the end of the question, under the instruction, complete chargeable income, uh, you have to put nil for every item with no adjustment. So the requirement already in the in the question. Yeah, similarly for your business income, you have to put a, a nil if there is no adjustment. Okay. So our objective is actually to identify expenses today. Yeah. Whether expense is yeah, not allowable or deductible, or you can give as a double deduction. Okay. Okay. Now let's see the the tutorial question. Oh, nampak anak saya tengah tidur lah kan? Ame, bangun. Uh, tutorial question is here. Okay, let's start with your um, Is it the one? No, not this one. Okay, it's this one. So how everyone is doing? Are you okay? Alhamdulillah, okay. Yeah, so far so good? Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes, good. All right. Uh, how many do we have now? 56. So, I do a few from the other section, Saya. It's okay. Alright, uh, for that, all right, I would like to mention I semalam dapat ilham. I got a ilham. Alright, to be fair, so this week I work 10 o'clock in the class. Next week, alright, I will do an online session for at 3.30 p.m. Alright, for section 2 and 3. So, it means that section 1, we have to watch the the video if you have class during that time. Yeah, but we will continue, right? We will continue. So it means that if you are not able to join this class, then you have to watch the, the video. But if you can watch, if you can watch, you can follow the class, you can follow the class, but at the same time, you can also review the recorded lecture. Right. So let, uh, do you have this question? Factors in number height, in number height, factors in number height. Do you have this? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to do this question, yeah? All right. Factors in number height, you fed up capital of 3.4 million. So whenever you look at the 3.4 million share up paid up capital, what does that indicate? How does that have any tax implication? Hmm. Paid up capital. Is there any tax implication? No. 
Apa agaknya? Non deductible. Ha? Bila paid up capital, if the paid up capital of the company is 2.5 million and below, it means that equal under small medium enterprise, the tax rate will be not 24%, but the tax rate will be uh, the first 500,000 of the charge of income will be at 80% and the balance will only be at 24%. It means that for this smaller company, per capital 2.5 million and below, right, the tax rate is lower. It's not rather than flat rate at 24%. The better than the first charge of income 500,000 is at 80%, the balance will be at 24%. So that's the implication of given, giving information on your paid up capital. Um, let me see, check first. Non-taxable. Ah, very good. Yeah, yeah, see? Okay. Okay, now we are given profit and loss. Account of the company for the year ended 30th June 2019 is as follows. So first, bila you tengok soalan, right, first what you do is that you just browse through the question. Right, it means that you don't have to go jump to straight, okay, not what through jawapan, no. Go through the question first. All right, you have sales for 952,000, 4 million. All right, and then you have other income, which is interest, dividend, rental, and then you have cost of sale. So every item here, you have notes to the account. It means that you're going to refer to the notes later. All right, in order to de uh, decide what will be the adjustment. All right, and then you have remuneration, staff welfare, expenses. Trade and insurance, general administration, profession charges and subscriptions, repairs and maintenance, entertainment, leasing, donation and miscellaneous. And in, at the end, you have a net profit before taxation of 1.7 million. All right. So if you still remember in the previous example, all right, when I showed you the final exam of the previous semester, we only have a few lines. Yeah. We have the administration, we have the marketing. Uh, I don't remember the expense. Tapi dia ada a few lines only. But under I, each item, the notes is longer. Alright? Uh, a lot more expenses under each item. Tapi nampak pro, dia punya profit and loss macam simple je. Right? But you have to go through. So what happened is that in practice, alright, um, yeah, for your information, I was in PressWaterStoopers, alright, for a few years before I joined the university. Yeah? So upon graduation, I joined PwC. Then only I come up for a few years. Then only I joined IOUM. So what I did was that, of course, I did the corporate taxation. So when you you will be given a, you will be given um, portfolios. Yeah, a number of companies under your portfolios. For example, in my case, I have about hundred companies. And normally, the same group of company will be under the same person. Lah. So maybe, for example, at that time, I have Tan and Tan Development under my, my portfolio, for example, yeah. So Gardenia Sinebrohat is under my portfolio, for example. At that time, it was long time ago, yeah. 20 years back, yeah. Outdated that information. But what we have is that every time uh, when audit goes in, right, we will request for the management account. Of course, the management account is not the final account, right. So auditor will have based on the management account, they will have to do audit check and to vouch everything but at the same time tax department we are going to get that management account of the same company all right and see the kind so we have this profit and loss account so what we do we have to go through those expenses and for example if you talk about uh dividend right so under socky delta dividend yeah. of course when you get your profit and loss account you only have that yeah so as a tax agent what you do is that you have to ask the information you have to give the in the clients, we call the clients, not the company that we handle. All right, we have to give them a list of information that we require. All right, for example, dividend. At the 1.5 million dividend, the company has to give me list of the dividend. Where does it come from? Which company? Is it foreign or local? Ke? So from there, I will have to work out whether the dividend is final, ke, dividend is exempted, ke, or dividend. Yeah, exempted if it's a foreign song, right? For example, if it's a rental income, then I have to ask, okay, where is this for, uh, location of the property? How many properties? And what are the expenses related to the property? So all this information, you have to ask your clients because they are the ones who have the 
information. Of course, um, they will give you some information, right? But it's not everything is there, right? For example, maybe general administration kat sini, right? Katalah dalam stocky, you ada 230,000. You want to know what is under general and administration because these expenses could be allowable, could be non-allowable, or maybe you can claim double deduction. Similarly, for your remuneration. Similarly, for your staff welfare. All these, all right, you need information from your client. So the first thing that you do is that you are going to send a list. You have to look into the profit and loss account. Then you have to send a list to your client to get information. Because without those information, you won't be able to provide or to do the tax computation for the company. Yeah. So in this case, or in this um, example, of course, we assume that these are the information provided by the client related to the profit and loss account. So that's how it works. Uh, outside. I think that now, even after 20 years, it's still the same. Yeah. Right. And then you look at the ones then, okay. In this case, all right, every item here, you have notes to the account, right? But in other questions, you will see that, all right, there may not be any notes to the account on the item, all right? For example, here, question number, question number two, all right? Uh, untuk other operating expenses ni, there's no notes to the account. Bila there's no notes to the account, actually there are two. Yeah. Number one is that of course you have to inform client, you have to call the client, okay, I want the details of this other operating expenses of 465,000. I want the breakdown of all these expenses. Okay. Assuming that, all right, there's no information provided by the client, right? And uh, it's a gray line. You do not know whether it's allowable or not allowable. In practice, what we do is that we claim first. Right, we claim those other operating expenses is a non, as a allowable expense. Because why? If the inland revenue asks us what are the details, then only we get from the client. But we claim first. But if the expenses very clearly, for example, depreciation, no notes to the account, of course you cannot claim because depreciation is clearly a non-deductible expense. Yeah? So you have to make uh, some kind of decision lah. Okay, because below you dah claim, alright macam ni eh, so under number three, depreciation, there's no note to the accounts. But of course depreciation clearly is not deductible expense, takkan you nak claim. Kan? So in that case, you have to add back lah. Alright, add back. You know that it's clear, clear cut, you have to add back. But if it's grey area, you claim first. Because why? Uh, if you are not sure, right, and then you tak claim, later you cannot claim anymore. But if you claim now, and the RB say that it's not allowable, then you have to add back. So that it's okay because uh, you claim first, then you add back later. So it means that you have to pay additional tax liability later. But if you already have not claimed, and then suddenly you say that, okay, I want to claim lah because now the client give me information, you cannot do that anymore. All right, because, because if you claim that your tax liability will be lower, all right, RB will not allow that. So you cannot advise or you cannot revise your tax form. Or if it gives a lower tax liability. But if it gives you a higher tax liability, then you can revise your tax computation. Yeah, that's how it works. So that's why being a tax agent, you have to be very, very clear and you know what to do. Right? If information is not provided by client, then you have to make the judgment whether you want to claim or you don't want to claim. Yeah? And you must, for example, if you if you submit without any um, documentation or supporting, right? You do not know, for example, in this case, you do not know whether you want to claim or not, but you claim first, all right, you must remind your client, you have to advise them that, okay, for these expenses, I'm going to claim first, right? But be aware that if you do not provide additional information requested by the inland revenue board, then these will give an additional tax liability uh, as a result of being non-deductible. Yeah, okay. Okay, that is on the practical side of the, of this question, lah. yeah? So actually, uh, actually this is real, all right? If you're working, this is what you do, all right? Uh, I really enjoy doing tax form for companies, but maybe at that time, I was not very good, lah, all right? I was just a junior associate at the, at the company, so um, maybe I did not work, do well, lah, right? Not like I understand the, 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 the concept as I was here, yeah? As I am now, all right? I hope I can go back and then help and see how it's done now, but well, uh, not, not yet, okay?
So you go through, all right, now you have the information about all these things, then you have to decide for every item. Right, for example, for the staff welfare kat sini, ada empat item. All right, it means that in your answer, you can add the staff welfare and these four items, whether you add back or you minus or nil. So four items, so ada empat tip for staff welfare comprise. Yeah. Similarly, for example, for remuneration, ada empat item kat sini. So you must have four lines, alright, for every item in your answer, right? That includes whether you add back, whether you give deduction, or you no adjustment that you put a money. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, we go. Let's go start from your. Where do you start? Start from net profit before taxation. So, uh, for your answer, always start with the name of the company at the top, right? You have Spectre, Sindhya, Berhad, Tax Computation for YA 2019. How do you know it's 2019? Look at the year end here, right? 30th June 2019 means that it's refers to YA 2019. All right, the year end also is very important, right? Because it means that if 30th June 2019, it starts on, when is the basis period start? It starts on 1st July 2018. So 1st July 2018 until 30th June 2019, this is your basis period. So whatever expenses incurred during this period only you are considering. Anything beyond this period, all right, you have to do adjustment. Okay? Right. So you're going to start with your 1.744500 profit before taxation. Then, then, all right, because you know that every item in the profit and loss has a notes to the account then you go straight to the notes to the account okay now you put note number one note number one okay okay now you have your remember must have name of the company factor syndrome heart tax computation for YA 2019. So starting from profit before tax, put a full one seven four four five hundred, and this one is in RM. All right. Okay. In this question, is given in thousands already, lah. All right, zero. Some question there they just put a uh, zero 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 to cut that figure, but in this question is in full, lah. So can okay. um. Uh, uh, some students confuse when you get to the thousands, zero, 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 ataupun dia full. In this case, tak nampak lah lah. Okay. Okay, note number one. Interest from excess. So, interest, is it an income or expense in this case? Interest kat sini. Interest from excess fund deposit. Income. Income. It's an income, right? So, yeah. then you have to adjust lah. So, when you see the interest from excess fund deposited with an Overseas bank credited and remitted to Malaysia, then you know that it's under section 4 A, B, A, C, or D. You got note number one, please. Alright? So that is easier. Bila you refer to, you tengok balik. Okay, ni note number one. Check up pasal interest. Interest is the, in this case, interest is from overseas, right? So I would say interest from foreign. Why is it foreign? Because it's from overseas. All right, and remember that any income received from overseas, all right, uh, is exempted. All right, but the tax treatment is that. Remember that you, the objective is to come up with the adjusted income of section 4A. So what you have here, all right, you know that this is interest income is under section 4C, so you take it out first. Even though it's exempted, you want to take out that amount, how much is the interest? 35,000. All right, you want to take it out first from the computation. Why? Because this is a non-business income, take it out first. Later at the bottom, you only have your 4C income, then only you put interest from your foreign, then exempted. Here, all right, some students tulis kat sini secara exempted. No, that's wrong. Right, what you want to do is you want to take it out first, then only assess at the bottom. Because why? That is the format for your 
charge of the income. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Yes, madam. Enak habis suara dah ni. Orang ye ye ye. Okay, number two. So, settle lah question number one. So, bila you dah ada macam ni, you dah ada tick tau. You dah ada satu tick kat sini, dah ada satu tick kat situ. Ha, that's how it works. Ya. Yeah. Then question, then you go to note number two, write down note number two. Ha. Okay. You see that the dividend here, you have dividend, ada banyak dividend, ada three types of dividend. Sorry, you have two type, two dividends from Fair Senja Berhad. Um, Fair Senja Berhad and then you also have dividend from Clear Private Limited. Okay. Fair Senja Berhad, the amount is given interim which is paid on January 2019. Gross 700,000, tax 196 mean that you, what you get is 504,000. And then the final dividend from fair, you get 500,000 minus tax 140,000, net 360,000. Alright. And clear private limited, gross zero. No, gross zero pula ni. What you get is 357,000. Right. It doesn't mention lah, gross the tax day berapa, but what you get is 657. So first again, similar to the interest, you know that this dividend is section 4, section 4C. So first, all right, you want to take out the whole amount of your dividend from your business income. Right, from your profit before tax. Because profit before tax, kita nak yang apa? Section 4A only. So any non-business income, section 4C, 4D, you take it out first. How much you want to take out? How much is in the profit and loss account lah? Katulah kat sini, dividend that you have is 1,521,000. 1, you want to take out 1521 lah. 1521,000. Take out 1.5 million. Whatever amount in the profit before that, take it out first. But if you look at here, you see that uh, amount is 504. 504 campur 360 campur 657. You akan dapat 1521. Which is this amount lah. Alright, so we take it out first, later at the bottom, then only you have your section 4C, dividend income, then only you have dividend from fair, interim, final, final, final dividend is final, because why this one is the imputation system. Alright, it means that tax has been deducted as source, so it means that the Malaysian dividend is given as a final. You don't have to pay any more tax on that dividend. But clear private limited at the bottom will be Huh. Exempt. Exempted. Why? It is a Sorry. loss income. But hmm. all these final, final exam is dekat bawah, at the bottom, under section 4C, not here. Here, you have to take it out, everything. Yeah, take out the amount from your profit before, profit before. Right, it was acquired during 2001 as investment using the company's surplus cash, dividend income was remitted to Malaysia during the financial year. So, settle lah question number, note number two. Then you go for note number three, all right? Rental. In this case, rental is still a uh, income, right? So rental is earned from letting an apartment in Perth. The company bought apartment five years ago. Only thirty thousand was remitted to Malaysia out of the net rental of seventy five thousand. So here it says that you only remit thirty thousand. So how much is rental appear here? Rental here is only thirty thousand. So you want to take out 30,000 ke? You want to take out 75,000? 30,000. 30,000 lah kan? Remember that you take out the amount in the profit and loss account. Whatever stated in the PNL, you take it out. So in this case, you have a rental. Number three is your rental. How much? You take out 30,000. Then that covers for all your Income lah settle dah. So dah berapa tick ada kat sini? Baru dah ada empat, empat tick. Yeah. So that's how you compute, that's how you do the tax adjustment when you do your corporate taxation. So this is on the income side, right? Then you continue with note number four. So when you talk about note number four onwards, then it already goes into your provision uh, expenses. So, bila expenses, remember that we are going to see whether the expense is allowable or the expense is non-allowable or you can claim double, double deduction. Alright. 
So how are you going to do this is that uh, we are going to go through every item in the notes to the accounts, right? For example here, cost of sale. Then you have note number four, cost of, cost of sales. Uh, I don't want to write it down, right? I want you to, to do that, okay? No, number four, you have cost of sales. No, item number one is your provision for stock of sleep. Okay. You will come across a lot, all right? For example, in this question, you can put provision for stock of sleep. So, you can faham concept for provision and accounts ni macam mana. Then, you are going to apply the same principle in other questions. All right? So, nanti you jumpa insurance premium, then you faham. Okay, insurance premium principle dia is like this. So, you apply the same bila you jumpa insurance premium in other question right so as you go on so means that the more you do exercises the more kind of expenses that you will find that you know how to keep each expense yeah all right so let's talk about the provision is it allowable provision account any idea no no idea hey Mesti dah tahu provision account. Not allowed, madam. Okay, generally should be allowable ke tak? General mm -hmm. not allowed. Not, not allowed. allowed. Why? Provision. General. Kenapa? Because ah. dia provision. Sebab dia provision. provision. Apa maksud provision? Okay. Dia violate which section? Dia tak spend lagi. Dia, dia tak spend lagi? Uh, not okay. Yeah. It's not incurred, alright, because section 33 kata expenses incurred outgoing. They kena expenses or outgoing incurred. So, maknanya bila provision ni, you just become accountant, become principal dia, you have to be prudent. Alright, you know that you're going to have stock obsolete. Stock tu dah obsolete belum? Belum, not yet. But you, prov you, you, you know that, okay, the stock, some of the stock will become obsolete. So, being an accountant, they are very prudent. It means that they look forward already, right? Uh, they prepare for the worst. Uh -huh. So what they do is that they already have put aside certain amount. That's why we call provide. You provide certain amount in case obsolete. Okay, we are prepared for it, right? It's incurred. Then you already take take into account all that. So whenever it's provision, it's not allowed because why? It's not outgoing. You don't pay for your provision accounts. It's not yet incurred. Is that clear? So when we talk about provision, provision accounts, right? Generally, general provision not allowed. So bila not allowed, what do you do? You have to add back. Okay. So what do you mean by general provision? Provision bila you come up with a provision for stock obsolete, provision for gratuity, provision for debt to debt. Provision for bad debts. All these provision accounts is not allowed. Right? So you have to add back lah. Alright? Bila nak add back, what do you mean by add back? It means that you have to add back whatever provision made during the year. Right? Provision made during the year. So provision ni dia ada balance account. Alright? It means that you have a brought forward account. How much is added during the year? How much is deducted during the year? And how much is your Closing figure. Okay, so that is your provision account. So, you can have the opening balance, addition during the year, deduction during the year, and closing figure. Right? So, for example, during the year, provision for your stock obsolete ni, kata lah during the year, is 100. Right? And beginning of the year, we have a provision brought down figure of 100. And during the year, they kata-kata ni provision for stock obsolete, you have 22,000. So, maknanya 22,000 tu additional during the year. Alright. Uh, and then, uh, this provision can also reduce. Alright. For example, kata lah, kata you kata, eh, kita provide too much lah. Let's reduce our provision account. So, you may reduce your account. Alright. So, if information is provided, then you reduce lah. So, what happened is, contoh ya. Yeah? Katalah during 100, 22, but at the same time, during the year, you reduce 10, right? So, what happened is that, what is your closing figure? Your closing figure would be 100 plus 22 minus 10, which is 122, 100, 112. That would be your closing figure. Betul tak? 100, 
plus 22 minus 10. This will be your closing figure. Alright. Tapi kalau tak ada any deduction during make during the year, then your closing will be 122. Okay. Sometimes the question give you in this form. Then you have to decide how much is the adjustment for the year. Alright. The adjustment for the year macam ni je. Satu is that you take the opening balance and your closing balance. Right? Kalau beginning ada 100, closing ada 1 to 2, maknanya you increase during the year by 20. Mm -hmm. So you increase, you add back lah, that increase. Okay? Let's assume that, okay, tadi kita buat uh, 10 kat sini kan? Right? Deduction 10. So sini 1, 1, 2. What would be the adjustment made for the year? Based on opening balance and closing balance. Hmm. Ha. What would be? 12. 12. Yes. Okay, you can make. Color beginning 100, closing 12, 112. Mana ni? There's an increase of 12. Uh, well. The increase of 12 means that you are going to add back. 12,000. Okay. You add back 12,000. Tapi katalah kat sini uh, is 30. So how much is the closing? 100 plus 22 minus 30 eh 92. 92. So what will be your adjustment? Kalau opening 100, closing 92 maknanya that's a decrease eight. of 8. So, bila decrease of 8, you minus lah. Kalau increase, you add back. Kalau min decrease, you minus 8. Alright, so your adjustment uh. will be minus 8. Alright, that is one way to decide the adjustment made for the, for the year. Another way is that you just look into the net movement during the year. Nampak? 22 minus 30 jadi berapa? Minus 8. Betul? Yes. So adjustment would be minus 8. Sama tak dengan method number 1? Sama. Number 1 method is that you look at the difference between opening and closing. Look at the movement. Alright? Kalau movement dia increase, you add back. Kalau decrease, you minus. But kalau dia, then the other way is that looking at the net changes. Increase 20 minus 30. So net changes is minus 8 then you minus 8 lah, adjustment for your provision account. Is that clear? Yeah, so yeah. whenever you have your provision accounts, general provision, yeah. So this is how you do it. We talk about generally everything, all the provision that you have come across. Okay. Bila ada general provision, dia ada satu lagi kita panggil sebagai Special provision. Right? Special provision. Special provision ni is under section 34. Right? I want say section 34. What, what do you understand by section 34? Expense is allowable. Because the law say so. Alright? So, maknanya generally, provision accounts is not allowed. Tapi special deduction, section 34 kata, kalau dia fall under this section 34, is allowable. Right? Section 34 is allowable. So, why is section 34 special deduction? It means that it must be number one, it must be trade related. Right, means that bila you provide, you provide provision for your, for your debts. Debts too must be trade debts. So assuming that you have some customers, normally what you do is that you have many customers. Alright, I am sure, I'm sure most of you have done your practical training, kan? Eh, belum. You all belum buat practical training. Belum. So you have list, kita panggil uh, list of your debtors. So you can aging, kan, you punya debtors too. Sama three months, apa, amount due to collect within three months. Or less than three months. Three to six months. Six to nine months. Nine to twelve months. Or more than one year. Right? So you have list of your debtors. So most likely, those debtors yang due 
dah overdue more than 12 months tu yang tak bayar-bayar lagi that can mean that you're going to collect the money from them right so if they have not paid you for more than one year it means that the likelihood of them not paying is higher isn't it as compared to those yang baru hutang you tiga bulan right those yang dah setahun tak bayar hutang ni most likely akan jadi bad debt so before it becomes bad you provide dulu Right, you provide for bad debts or you provide for debt to debt, so that becomes the provision account. But section 34 says that if that provision account is related to your trade debts, right, and number two is must be specific. Specific means that you must provide the name of the debtors, the, you must have a list. Lah. Name of the debtors yang you rasa masuk dalam provision ni, yang you nak provide ni. Yang more likely to become bad debt, right? So you must identify who are the debtors, what are their address for example, how much do they owe you, alright? And have you sent a reminder later, what are the things that you have done, action taken in order for you to collect from them. So all these must be done in order the expense to be a specific deduction. Alright, if you have this amount, specific deduction, then that amount is allowable, then therefore there is no adjustment. Alright, so it will be nil under specific. Yeah, specific deduction. Other than these trade debts, all these things, special deduction me, everything falls under general. Being a general, then you have to decide how much is the non-allowable expense during the year that you have to adjust. Okay? Right. So that is on your provision. Is that clear? So whenever you come across provision accounts in other questions, then you should know already lah. Kalau provision to general, then it's not allowed. Then you have to find what is the amount which it has to be added back. But if it's a specific deduction or special deduction, you get to your provision here, then you give a no adjustment. Ni lah. Yeah? So provision for stock obsolete, number one, you have to have 22,000 added back, right? And then you have insurance premium. Okay. Insurance premium paid to an insurance company in Taiwan for export of cargo to Taiwan. So remember that, and this expense, is it related to your business? Right? If it's related to your business, then it's allowable lah under section 33, right? So insurance premium paid to an insurance company in Taiwan, is it wrong to pay insurance in, uh, yeah, all company most likely they will take insurance. So they, when they take insurance, they have to pay premium. So the insurance premium is a business expense, right? The difference here is that uh, the insurance company in Taiwan. So there's no issue. You can insure your company, your your with any, any other company, right? It's just that previously, right? This one is no longer applicable for YA 2019. Yeah, it was until 2017. Previously, all right, this insurance premium paid, paid to insurance company was given a single deduction. But in the previous law, if the insurance premium is paid to a Malaysian company, they can claim double deduction. So that makes a difference between you pay insurance to a Malaysian company and a non-Malaysian company. If you pay to a Malaysian company, you can claim double deduction. Kalau to a non-Malaysian company, it's a single deduction. Why both are business expenses? It's just that if in a Malaysian company, kita nak, kita nak encourage company to um, to take up insurance from Malaysian company, so that's why government give you double deduction. But that was previously, alright? It was until, I think, YA 2017. Then it was uh, deleted, right? So no more. Uh, um, no more uh, preference given to a Malaysian company. So any company, uh, whether Malaysian or non-Malaysian, the company is given a single deduction. So it's a lower expense. So what will be your answer for this insurance premium? Ha, so dah tidur? Nil medium. Nil ya, sebab it's a lower expense. I want you to do, when you do your all question, every item tu, why I keep on asking what would be the adjustment? Not only you must know it's nil, but you must know kenapa. Why you have that kind of adjustment so that bila you know why, then when you come across other questions, then you know 
the same principle apply. Right? So you have to understand lah, the reason behind you give adjustment. Whether it's allowable or not allowable. Alright, the third one is you have damaged goods written off. Is this expense deductible or non-deductible? It's 11 o'clock. Deductible. Deductible because it's a damaged goods written off. Memang that incurred. And goods ni memang we're talking about goods, talking about customer. Memang all trade related lah. It's all business expense. Anything to do with your customer, anything to do with your stock or goods, anything to do with your stuff. Alright, it's all business related and normally it's allowable. Cuma dekat sini damaged goods tu dia memang dah incurred, written off. So memang dah damage. Right, so that's why it's allowable. So again, it's a, it's a new. So dalam cost of sales, cost of sale, dia ada three item lah. Provision for stock obsolete, insurance premium dengan damage goods. So provision you add back 22, nil and nil. So you can ada tiga line kat situ lah. So kat situ dah bagi tiga markah. Ya, yeah, tiga tick sama bukan tiga markah ya, yeah, tiga tick. Normally satu tick carries generally lah, right? Satu tick carries 0.5. So kalau markah ada 30, you can assume that there should be 60 ticks lah kat situ. Ya, yeah, normally. So next we go to remuneration. Alright, remuneration comprises of EPF, employer's contribution of 157.5. Bonus three months salary 150,000, salary of an expatriate employee, and then you have contribution to an unapproved provident fund. So, there are the empat item, then you must have the four items in your answer. Okay, number one, talking about EPF contribution. Right, EPF contribution is an allowable expense under section 34. Maknanya, right. Kalau section 33, EPF contribution is not allowed because it's not the business of the company to contribute for the employees. Yeah, but section 34 provides that EPF contribution or any contribution by the employers to an approved fund. So I want you to make a list, alright, under section 34 to what list? Apa yang ada under section 34 so that Whenever you come across, you boleh check the list. Tak adalah every time baru nak buka textbook, every time nak buka textbook. Yeah? So make a list of the expenses under section 34. Some of them have been deleted, so dah kurang dah sikit. Yeah? So EPF yang ada, uh, is allowable, right? dia tak panggil EPF, dia panggil approved uh, contribution fund. Yeah? Any approved contribution fund. So EPF is one of the example of approved fund lah in Malaysia. So the law says that under section 34, EPF is allowable or any contribution, any approved fund is allowed provided that the amount does not exceed 19% of the total remuneration. Right? So let's see that, what do you mean by remuneration? Right? When talk about remuneration, right, the law says that Salary is a remuneration, right? You have bonus. And in this case, you also have salary of an expatriate employee. Okay, EPF is only paid to a Malaysian company. Uh, sorry, to a Malaysian. Yeah. Hold on, I'm trying to urgent. What's up, Jill? Okay. Okay, Jill, you're here. All right. So, salary and bonus. So, kat sini, how much is this uh, bonus? Bonus paid is 150,000. Right? Information is provided there. Yes, bonus and salary of an employee. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Macam mana nak compute ni? How much is the salary? Staff welfare ke ada remuneration kat atas? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Okay. How much is the remuneration kat atas? Okay, tengok balik kat atas ni. 956. Remuneration is 956, 100. Right? 956, 100. And that 956 includes EPF for 157, 500. 
bonus of 150,000, salary of an expatriate. Or expatriate, you bayar 39,000. Uh, EPF, you bayar. But ni termasuk semua ya. So, katalah kat sini berapa? Total kat sini, 1.7500 plus 150,000 plus 39,000 plus 9,600. So, total kat sini memang 356,000. Right? So, kalau total 356,100, maknanya the balance is salary. Right? Remuneration. So, jadi berapa? Tolak 956,100. You get that? So, kat sini salary total is 600,000. Okay. Clear that? Total remuneration 956,100 and the amount given for MPF, bonus salary of expatriate employee and contribution to annual profile is total 356,100. So, out of 956,000, 300,000 is salary. So, sekarang ni you nak tahu how much is the EPF. The law says that EPF, you can allow 19%. So, you kena check lah. The amount paid for EPF, 157,500 ni, is it more or less than 19%? Alright? More or less than 19% of the salary and bonus. In this case, bonus, uh, three months salary kan? Bonus is... 150,000. The total remuneration to a Malaysian because EPF only for Malaysian. Kalau salary for expatriate tak kira ya. Right? So bonus, so mean that here have 750,000. So this is the total remuneration paid to a Malaysian employees. Right? So how you want to check how much is 19% of this? 19% of 750,000 times point 750,000 times 0.19 equals to 142,500. How much the company pay for EPF? 157. 157. So it means that 157,500. So it means that if 19% is 142,500, right? Company paid 157,500. Maknanya ni company bayar more or less than 19%? More. Oh. More. So bila more than 19%, the excess tu is not allowed. So how hmm. much is the excess? Allow 142,500 but you pay 157. So you tolak lah. Tolak 157,500. So the 15,000 is not the excess that you have to add back. Why we add back? Because anything above 19% is not allowed. The law only allows 19%. So that's how you add back 15,000. So benda ni, you kena tunjuk kat workings lah. Alright, you have one page untuk your working je. Working untuk apa? Untuk note number. Note number 4 EPF. Oh sorry, note number 5 for your EPF. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So EPF nombor 1 dah EPF, you have to add back 15,000. Tu baru satu. And then item number dua, bonus. So bonus kat sini tak ada masalah. Previously ada restriction. But now dah tak ada restriction. Alright, bonus in this case no adjustment because it's allowable. So meal. Okay, salary. Salah kena bayar expatriate. No. No problem with paying expatriate and uh, salary. So meal juga untuk expatriate. But contribution to an unapproved provident fund. What would be your adjustment for that? Okay. At back because why? Unapproved. Unapproved. Un yeah, kalau dia approved, it's allowable up to 90%. But in this case, unapproved one. So that amount is not allowed. So you have to add back 9,600. Okay? So you have four items there. Number one, you may want to show the workings how you get that 15,000. Okay. We have three more minutes. So I don't want to continue. Okay. Kita pun habis 120 kan? So, I hope that you will continue doing this question. I will continue having uh, this tutorial. If you can have the answer, all right, it will be better because when we discuss, then you can check your answer. Right, and then you can provide feedback for me. Right, uh, and then it will help you to clarify your understanding. 
So I hope that you can continue doing this tutorial question. And I will come back and see you again, inshallah, next week. But next week, all right, I will have a session on Tuesday, 3.30 p.m. All right, with a student from section 2 and 3. So, Monday, maknanya tak ada kelas lah. So, maknanya Monday, you boleh buat you punya tutorial question ni. All right, settlekan tutorial question. And for those from section 2 and 3, you have to do the question. You have to watch this video and then you have to do the tutorial question. And then when we discuss on Tuesday, 3.30 p.m., all right, hopefully uh, you have all the answers. Is that clear? Number yes. one. Yes. Yes. Not that, madam. Okay. Uh, any other issue? I think that I need to... Um, when is your midterm exam? No, no, no. Now. Can we decide on the date? Because sekarang ni, uh, department dah minta tari. Can we have it... Um, because my other class advanced test is having it add on Friday, seven, uh, 10 of July. Ke? Is it 10 of July, Friday? Yes. Now, my advanced test is uh, during that time. So, how is it going to be? Is that um, I think uh, a bit more uh, of time. How the midterm is going to be is that I will have questions. Right, assuming that let's say that the midterm is at 9 to 11 o'clock in the morning, I will give the, the question 10 minutes before the exam in the Google Classroom. Okay, and then means that you can uh, see the question 10 minutes earlier. Lah. All right, so what I want to do is that you have to answer the question in, on the paper. It has to be uh, written down. All right, you have to write down your answer. Okay, and then Given two hours, you have to answer all the questions. Then have, after 11 o'clock, you have to stop writing. So stop writing 11 o'clock. Maybe during the exam, I will be on, on the screen. Lah. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Lah? After 11, then I give you 30 minutes for you to take photo of your answer. Either you want to scan or you want to take photo. All right, and then convert that into PDF. So, I will give the instruction later lah, yeah. Uh, convert that into PDF, then you have to submit within that 30 minutes through your Google Classroom. Yeah, so that's how we are going to do your midterm exam. Your final exam will also be the same uh, mechanism, alright. It's going to be online, alright. During that two hours, you don't have to be online, alright. You can just print the questions or you can just download the question and then you don't have to be face to face with me during the midterm. I think so, right? Because uh, two hours before you not born, you get data, right? So my answer, you just continue. So um, that's how we are going to do it. So maybe we can decide on a time and date. You all ada kan tarik untuk subject-subject lain. So maybe yang tak, janganlah ada clash ataupun two near to each other. Nanti alasan tak boleh score exam. Right? So I want you to discuss on the date and time. A time is always 9 a.m. to 11. Two hours only. All right, I'll, uh, I'll give you the topic later. Uh, and then, right, decide the date lah. I need to forward, decide today because I need to forward to the department, right, for their collection. So I think with that, I thank you for all your participation, all right, for all your assistance, all right. I hope that you have learned something today. We are going to see again next time, inshallah. With that, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, madam.